Woke up this morning, think I'm about to go some of the day. Best friend got caught up when I stayed in Douglasville. Man, what's good with y'all? How y'all doing today? That's good, that's good. Um, <laughs> today, the making of J. Cole, middle child, T minus. Y'all know two my, uh, T minus is. Oof, stepping on my cord. Um, that being said, let's get into the video. Y'all be sure to like, subscribe. Shout out to my boys at Genius. Y'all know what I mean by that. Shout out to the bros at Genius. Yeah. What makes it better working with Cole side by side is you can, you know, understand Jesus. what he's looking for in that moment. When you're in the studio with somebody, it's all about, about knowing what the person I'll wants. Like, hey, I'm, you know, I'm looking for something time. that's like up tempo. I'm in that mood today. Damn. Earth you know, I went to North Carolina kid. back in December for and like we found this sample and, you know, the rest of this year. I'm all in my bag, it's hard as it get. I do not store powder, I might take a sip. I might hit the blunt, but I'm liable to trip. I ain't popping no pill, but you do as you wish. I roll with some fiends, I love them to death. I got a few mil, but not all of them rich. What good is the bread if my niggas is broke? What good is first class if my niggas ain't shit? After producing Kevin's Heart and it being one of the only songs on the album that was produced by somebody else, I think he trusted me as a producer more as far as the sound goes. Cole, he's he really produces, he really gets down with the whole production. He understands like, you know, sonics and he understands like drum choicing and like all that stuff. Like he just has a great understanding for production. To give you a little history on how this writer came about too, we didn't make this in the Dreamville sessions. This was actually you know, a month prior. So pretty much the last day, you know, before I had to fly back to Toronto. Interestingly enough, I didn't, I've never heard of Tracklib before that. So he really put me onto it. With Tracklib, you can pull up all the stems to a song. The name of the record is called Wake Up To Me and it's by a group called First Choice. do which with track live is you can isolate certain things so i was Yo. able to you know pull up these horns and pretty much play them by themselves okay <laughs> okay i heard something similar to this but this is cool as fuck. Cool as fuck. Um, I'm gonna give my friends on my Discord this. That's what I'm gonna do. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna tell them about this. I remember Cole's reaction was like, "Oh, yeah, I shoot, produce like, a little bit. This I is don't crazy. Do the sample was really fast. It was already there's so much happening, and I felt like you know we could slow it down a little bit. So this is how the sample sounds in the session." I put some reverb on it to, you know, give it that effect of it being a little bit more airy, a little bit bigger. From there, we just started building the drums out. Cole's idea was to keep it really simple at the beginning. So he wanted the drums to be kind of spaced out and, you know, not happening too much. So this is the idea, you know, that we both came up with. It's actually very reminiscent of KOD because a lot of it's very like stuttery kind of hats, you know what I mean? Very short, but you know, rhythmic. And playing along with the hi-hats is a clap sound, rim shot, like perk, perk sound, and a bell sound. The next move was to essentially build the kick pattern in the 808. I just want y'all to see, this is FL Studios, and a lot of us musicians have FL Studios, or artists have FL Studios. Cole actually already had the 808 in mind. He already figured out exactly how he wanted the pattern to go. He had the rhythm in mind, you know what I mean? He had the idea of it going from low to high. Because I have a great understanding of how the music should kind of play out, I just kind of figured it out. This is pretty much, you know, the 808 and the kick coming together in the song, you know, and this is this is how the bounce was pretty much. When the beat comes in and the 808 hits, it's like, it hits you, you know what I'm saying? It's like, hits you really hard. The 808 is slapping. 
to add a little bit more um, energy to the song when it drops, we added um, some hi-hats as well. There's an, actually another perk, perk sound that we added. Sounds a little like this. We just heard it and it sounded like a vocal effect. That, you know, sometimes you hear like a hey or like a what? We also added a little snare that comes in as well every once in a while. Mm, and also the snare is, is uh, layered with like the clap as well. I like watching this because so all these songs I've been watching, I rapped. I was able to rap a whole song, not a verse, a whole song with hooks. The next move was to add some instruments, you know, some melodies. This is something that you hear in the music. It's more predominant actually in the second verse, but it's actually playing in the first as well. This sound is a sound that Cole loves in his music. I think he used the same sound in Window Pane. We added a, an extra sound as well that sits in the background. You don't really hear it until like the end of the record essentially, but it's it's playing throughout the music. We messed with this sound and made it kind of like this like background sitting sitting tucked kind of vibe. Also, we added another sound. Comes in, in the hook, it's like a really low bassy sound. You can't really hear it, but you can feel it. It's a little mm -hmm. bit more aggression in the bottom end, so you can right. feel like a little bit more energy. It's a big part of my sound as a producer, my signature, you know, if you listen to like records like Swimming Pools or She Will, it has that kind of low, bassy, kind of moving, paddish kind of bass. At the end of the record, we kind of added this like effect to make everything kind of sound, you know, sound dark. And the brass is essentially kind of warping. I threw this effect called camel space over top of the brass, and that's what gave it that whole effect. We kind of added all these elements, added the brass, all these melodies, all these drums, and we kind of felt like the beat was full, the beat was complete. So this is what the whole song sounds like together. A lot of the record is, is like a statement record. It's not meant to be like this crazy song with so much happening. We really, you know, approach the song with the aspect of it being like, yo, I'm about to run shit in 2019. So this is, this is it. It was very much a lot of his vibe as a producer and my vibe as a producer. Like there are elements in this beat that gave me feelings of some of the stuff from KOD. But then there's a lot of elements that I would add. I just poured something in my cup. Hey, I've been wanting something I can feel. Promise I am never letting up. Okay. Money in your palm don't make you real. We weren't even thinking about it being like this whole middle child experience as far as even the production goes. It just naturally came that way. Bro, no overthinking, just making quality music. He mm. does this shit naturally, you know what I mean? Producer, artist, writer, everything. So, and I'm always creating, so we click up out. every once in a while. You get too many? No? All right. It was a good, oh. Uh, Adding all these extra. Okay, never mind. Um, shout out to my boy T-minus. Um. But yeah, this this song is so so good. I remember um, J Cole free summer freestyle. I remember that. I used to be able to rap that song too. <sighs> these songs, bro. I'm telling you, man. I I like seeing the producers that make these songs explain and break everything down for you. And he gave me some game. If y'all didn't catch that, he gave me some free game. I hope y'all got some free game too. That being said, be sure to like, subscribe. Stay tuned to the next video. Shout out J. Cole. Shout out Team Minus. And what's your favorite J. Cole song? Peace.